really to focus on this full time. I've been doing environmental policy work even before I went, in, went into vet school, and, um, but um, came out of vet school and, and got more and more involved in, in the energy arena through the organization. I'm also father of three boys and I have uh, two grandchildren and that is actually one of the primary motivations for why I do the work that I do because I see in a very real sense uh, the choices we're making today are diminishing the world for our children and our grandchildren and the energy choices in particular because they are having a profound impact on the world that we're leaving for our children and our grandchildren and Florida is really at the center of that because um, while I live in Knoxville, Tennessee right now, I, I lived a significant part of my life, I lived in Pensacola, Florida, and still maintain a, a place on, on Perdido Key in, in the area there. And uh, I firsthand walked those beaches, uh, I guess it was a year or so ago, when you had the BP spill and the oil washing up there in Gulf Shores and other things. Um, and I experienced that very, very much firsthand. Um, and in a very real sense, we've seen a lot of problems developing from our current energy choices, and BP was certainly uh, one of them. Our organization, the Southern Lines for Clean Energy, you can learn more about it at cleanenergy.org. Very easy uh, to remember, just cleanenergy.org. We work in five areas. We work on climate policy, and as Susan said, I firmly believe that we are transforming and disrupting and destabilizing our climate. It, it's, it's an uh, it's an overwhelmingly large system to try to understand and comprehend for humans to understand, but if you look at the science, the science is overwhelming that we are having a very discernible impact on our climate. Uh, I had daffodils in my front yard in Knoxville in January this year. We basically didn't have a winter at all. And I know there's variations, but you see consistent trends up in uh, where we're going with the way we're impacting the climate. And, and the average uh, temperatures going up across the globe. We work on climate policy. We work on energy efficiency. We'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. We've done a lot of work here in Florida. Uh, the Southern Alliance of Clean Energy works in five southern states, Florida, North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee. And we've done a fair amount of work here in Florida over the years and, and have developed somewhat of an understanding of some of the issues that are very much alive and well here in Florida. And advocating for energy efficiency is a key part of our work. Another area that say, the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy works on is clean energy, which is talking about renewable energy. Again, we'll talk about that more tonight. We also work on clean fuels. Uh, clean fuels are what we look at, renewable fuels such as biodiesel, cellulose and ethanol. We also are strong believers in electric vehicles. We've, we've actually done and I drive an electric uh, Nissan Leaf, and I'm utterly convinced that that is a car, that is a car of the future, uh, and it is one of the most remarkable vehicles that I've ever driven. Um, and so, clean clean fuel. We think electricity can be a clean fuel. Um, and then we work to oppose certain technologies which we classify as high risk energy choices, and those are coal plants, nuclear power plants and offshore drilling. And we also look at the tar sands coming out of uh, Canada as sort of an extension of the, the drilling and the, and the raping of the land in a very literal sense. Um, so those are the five areas that we work on. I'm eager to get into the conversation tonight, so I'm not going to take a, a lot of time going over all the problems, because I think we'll, we'll bring them out over the course of the conversation. But um, what I would want to emphasize is that we are at a critical juncture. We have built a system in the United States that actually works quite well, or has historically worked quite well. We have one of the most reliable uh, utility grids in the world. If you've traveled to other countries, you've, you may have experienced firsthand some of the, the problems that a lot of the developing world and even some of the developed world have <coughs> with their electric uh, grids. We have a very reliable grid, writ large. We've accomplished many of the objectives that when we set up these state-sponsored monopolies and other ways to bring electrification uh, to the citizens of the United States, we've done a pretty good job. Uh, but what we're beginning to see are some fundamental problems and cracks in that system. Uh, the system is 
contributing significantly to global climate change because a significant amount of the power that we use comes from fossil fuels. Oh, still over 50% of the electricity in the United States is coming from burning coal. Uh, we've seen some turn down of that, but we're still experiencing very high levels of utilization of coal. We have built the 20% uh, of our power comes from these nuclear power plants that we built, and we've seen issues with nuclear power over the years, most recently in Japan with the Fukushima event that we've now just celebrated the first anniversary from. Um, right here, just up the road, those of you who've been paying attention have probably heard the cracks, uh, heard about the cracks at the uh, Progress Crystal River plant. We've renamed that plant the Humpty Dumpty plant because we really honestly do not believe that you're ever going to be able to put that plant back together again. But it is, it should be quite concerning to you to know that the safety containment vessel has now been cracked three times by the company that runs the facility and they did not expect any of those cracks ever to happen. And that plant, we believe, will likely not be uh, ever started back up again. Um, and we, we've seen that we haven't solved the nuclear waste issue. So these really sort of major sources of how we get our power we're beginning to see that they're not sustainable, they're fundamentally flawed for a lot of reasons. Uh, I could go into great detail about that. And we need to make a change. The good news is that we have an opportunity. As Susan mentioned, uh, I have direct experience, we've advocated for a long time that renewable energy works. And I'm here to tell you it works. I have it on my house. I know it works. Between my solar system and my geothermal system, we virtually use, on a net basis, uh, no net electricity. Now, since I've started plugging my electric car in, we've upped that a little bit, but still, as a general rule, uh, I looked at my meter the other day and I've used it three years. Uh, after three years of use, I think I've used 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity, and that's at the end of the, the winter. I'll run my meter backwards all summer, and if we go back down to zero, but even at the high point, right at the end of the winter, I've used as much as most people use in uh, maybe two months uh, on the average use. And what I'm telling you is that solar power works, it's here, it can, it can, it's becoming increasingly affordable, and we need to figure out ways to unleash the innovation for that. Energy efficiency works, it's here, technology is changing all the day. We've gone from the incandescent bulb, which is really a better heater than it was a light source, because when, when you touched it, it would burn your fingers, um, to the compact fluorescent, which is, again, a cooler. So you go from a 100-watt bulb to a 15-watt bulb, and now we're going down to LEDs, which are you know, maybe two or three watts. So this trend line, just with the lighting, is what we're seeing in other things. I remember when my, the compressor on my air conditioner used to come on, my lights used to dim in my house. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. Air, the refrigerators are so much more efficient. Things like geothermal heat pumps and other things are phenomenal technology that can dramatically reduce your consumption. I saw close to a 70% reduction in my overall energy use by using geothermal. These technologies are there, they work. What we need to do now is come up with the policy mechanisms that allow them to be utilized on a large scale. I believe that we can do that. 